I made a dynasty trade just the other day. One of my first in a while because nobody's been trading, but I got Tyreek Hill. I got Hollywood Brown, I got David Montgomery, and I got Austin Eckler. This is obviously me moving towards a contending year this year. Now, who did I give up? I gave up Romo Dunze, Bo Nix, DeMario Douglas, and a third. Okay, so I think on paper you look at this. Romo Dunze and Tyreek Hill, uh, from a value standpoint, they're being valued like, mostly wide receiver 10 through 12 range. Both of them, they're like pretty much back-to-back in most community rankings. They're back-to-back mm-hmm. in my rankings. And so like I consider this, if you are a one-year reload or a rebuild, you're taking the Romo Dunze side. If you are a contender, you are good taking Tyreek Hill. Looking at a three-year outlook here for those two players, who would you rather have for the next three years? Hill or Odunze? I think it's up in the air. I think there's an argument to be made for both. And then when you're talking about the rest of this trade, and, the, and I so I kind of those are kind of a wash. And then it's Knicks, and I got Hollywood and David Montgomery. Like, you know, it's a super flex league, 12 team super flex tight and premium. So I probably would have wanted a little bit more for a quarterback, but again. I'm contending. I have it's a dual elite QB build. I have CJ Stroud. I have Jordan Love as my quarterbacks. I have Aaron Rodgers as my third quarterback. So I had an extra quarterback to give. This is me taking advantage of being able to make a contending move and send off some assets that are probably not going to be as productive this year uh, in hopes that I can be a top two team in my league and get a buy in the playoffs. I'm curious what you think of this trade. Since yeah, it's my I trade, I mean, at, it's like at first glance looking at this, I mean, I, I personally prefer the Tyreek side, especially if you're going and trying to win a championship. But again, I'm viewing Rome and Tyreek kind of in a value vacuum, pretty equivalent, right? On Keep Trade Cut, they're going less than a round apart. They're pretty close in value, very understandable because of their outlooks and their situations, the age gap. So you you kind of match those two together. You're like, okay, let's just call it fair, even though Tyreek's the small win. Uh, so w- what about Demario Douglas and a third? I guess you can count them as the throw-in for, for the small Good value discrepancy though. between Roma Dunze and Tyreek Hill. Now you look at Bo Nix for Hollywood Brown, David Montgomery, and Austin Eckler. That's pretty up in the air, too. Honestly, I prefer... I, I think Hollywood Brown is being underrated at the moment, so sure. I think it's a fair value deal. I think you're getting more production upside by getting Hollywood and David Montgomery there. Austin Eckler, again, kind of the throw-in on the contender side, which makes total sense. If you're the rebuild side or the productive struggle, struggle side, getting all the young guys here, you want Eckler off, off your team... That's totally a guy I'm willing to offload in a situation oh, yeah. where I'm rebuilding because I'm also getting points off my team as well. So, so uh, it seems like bad. our dynasty leagues have kind of come back to life in the last couple of days. And this is what happens. We get to training camp. Right. People actually start talking about the players. They start seeing them on Twitter. Yeah. They start waking up. So your dynasty leagues are probably going to start coming back to life. What should you do to make sure that you are taking advantage of your trades, of the values of all of your leagues in your dynasty leagues? Let's talk about this. And let's give them a couple just... just strategy pieces that we use when we're trading in this this is one of the most fun times to trade in the dynasty season it really is yeah, it can is be really risky fun. it's mm-hmm. very volatile but it's also very fun so i would say this number one uh if you can get contending pieces now for no more of a steep price than you would have gotten them even three months ago and also no more of a steep price than you could get them for in season Now's not a bad time to buy contending pieces. Tyreek Hill, good example there. I mean, I, look, it's my trade, so it's like, I don't know. I don't like giving up Romo Dunze, but with Tyreek, like, that's a good price for buying Tyreek Hill before the season, before he scores 21 points a game. Because he'll be, yeah, he will be more expensive. So <laughs> I would say for, for this time of, of the offseason, you're going to have a lot of teams trying to determine which way they're, they're going to get uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable to some extent. Like every team teeters between do I go and contend this year or do am I a team that looks like I'm going to want to reload and go win next year, which is exactly right. the case when I was trading with this guy. Well, those guys, those guys being Dom and Aaron, shout out to our team. And also the exact case I've been trading with other people. They're kind of like, yeah, I'm not sure. I got a lot of work to do with my team, blah, blah, blah. People are going through identity crises with their dynasty teams right now. And you can use that to your advantage. Okay. If you... If you have a team that wants to go a certain direction with their team, then you play the other part of that leverage, right? He wanted to go one year reload. I played the contending assets on his team, right? And I don't think I, I don't think I fleeced him on this trade by any means. I think there's a lot of people that say the Rome side won, and I absolutely, I, I it, sure, I, yeah, but it makes sense. But I, but getting a fair value trade for a contending piece like Tyree Kill one month before the season, that's not bad. And so like. I'm going to go around to my the teams in my league and say, okay, like, what do you think you're doing this year? Like, what's what's your team looking like? I'm going to try to find people that are, like, in between, you know, contending and reloading or rebuilding. And then I'm going to try to kind of take advantage of some of the uncertainty around their position in our Dynasty League and get some of our players off of their team. But what other strategy tips do you have for trading at this time of the year? Yeah, I think something that you want to definitely monitor is the extreme rebuilds or reloads that are saying, 
Like it, for, for as many contenders as there are that are like, hey, I got to go get point scores and I got to overpay for them because, you know, points win you leagues. There are just as many people that say, hey, these points are costing me a super high pick in my future rookie draft in 2025. And you want to be careful there. And this is something that I would strongly recommend. Not only be careful, um, don't even think as a rebuild or a reload, do not even think about the points that your productive assets are going to score on your team if you keep them on your roster for a little bit during the season. Because at the end of the day, you don't really know what position you're going to end up picking from in the next rookie draft. Even if you offload those productive players, you could still end up with the 103. I promise you, it hurts you more than it helps you to, to rush the process. If you have productive assets on your team and you know for a fact their price is going to go up mid-season and you have to sacrifice a little bit of production on your team in the process as a rebuild, it's worth it to get that value premium mid-season. Great example here. I, I picked up an orphan team a couple years ago, and my the best player on the team was Nick Chubb on my team. I was like, I do not want Nick Chubb on my team. He's the last guy I want on my, on my team. I mean, this is, this is like productive prime Nick Chubb, top four running back option every single year. I decided to hold off on trading him in the offseason because everyone was trying to lowballing lowball me knowing that I was an extreme rebuild team. I waited until like week 10 of the season close to the trade deadline and I sold him for two firsts. Jeez, man. Two firsts before his value plummeted. If you're saying that doesn't happen in my league, shut up. Seriously, I'm not yeah. doing it on this video. Like the these are trades from our supporters. Every league is different. Not every league is a bunch of experts like you. That's the right. it's the dumbest cop it, it, out for disagreeing yeah, with a yeah. piece of advice that I've a, ever heard in my life. Yeah, and it wasn't a dumb move. I mean, it was, it was a move that was made over 2 years ago. Um, so when Nick it, Chubb it was, was in his prime, ex exactly, and people were happy and absolutely willing to pay that. And it was it was a price that you had to pay if you were a contender. And that guy ended up almost winning the championship if he didn't win the championship. Right. Um, so uh, in another example here, we've got some more trade scenarios here. I think an interesting one to look at is a one QB scenario here with Jordan Addison and Brian Thomas um, side A getting that side, and then ETN on the other side. I think this is an easy win for Addison and Brian Thomas. Um, I'm not a super big fan of ETN. I'm very notable, not big fan of ETN. Um, in Dynasty, I think his price isn't abysmal right now, honestly. Uh, this is a PPR League 10 team, 1QB. So it is a bit higher upside, so I understand moving off of Jordan Addison to go acquire a guy like ETN and up-tiering. I think moving off of Brian Thomas on top of Addison was a little bit of an overpay, even in a 10 team, to get a guy like ETN, whose future is really up in the air after this season. Yeah, I definitely think that this is closer in a 10-team 1QB than it would be in a 12-team Superflex, because again, yeah. in 1QB leagues, we talk about the emphasis on running backs at the running... I mean, specifically at that position compared to in Superflex League. Still starting two running backs here. However, when you're looking at the value, even just the value analysis of this trade, the value lies with the receivers for there's, a lot of reasons. There's too much value upside with Brian Thomas. The insulation lies with the receivers. The yeah. total value accumulation lies with the receivers. And so, totally good with the receiver side of this trade. Is our guy Mike Moment made this trade from our Discord, so shout out Mike. Uh, but this is a good example of a trade where you are kind of not only getting value insulation, uh, but you're getting... I mean, technically, you could probably get better production from these guys than ETN out of this year, and it wouldn't technically shock you. Like, this could end up being an all-around really good move. So right. let's go to the next one here. Uh, and again, we're going to go through, talk about these trades, talk about these are all made recently, talk about the implications, league settings, all of that. Stephon Diggs and Jaden Reed uh, for Nico Collins in a 2025 third. Now, this one hasn't been done yet. Uh, in this particular instance, you see you're down tiering from one Houston Texans wide receiver to the other. Uh, and you're getting Jaden Reed on top, essentially. Uh, which, to me, the difference between Nico Collins and Jaden Reed is probably not quite as Stephon Diggs. I'm personally good with this trade. I'm good with this for a couple reasons. I think from a production standpoint, Stephon Diggs and Nico Collins could end up being pretty comparable if not Stephon Diggs making, having a slight edge on Nico Collins from a production standpoint. But with Jaden Reed, uh, Jaden Reed is a guy that's being undervalued, but that also could be the wide receiver one on his team as well. The 25 thirds of throw-in, we don't even really consider that in this trade. It's a 12-team Superflex PPR league. And so getting to Two wide receivers that you can start every week for the price of one wide receiver that you can start every week. I like that. Now, the one thing I don't like is kind of pivoting the risk of one Texans wide receivers to the other. But again, t play the market. Which one's cheaper? That's why I like this. So I'm good with this trade. I like the Diggs Reed side. And I think that in a 12 team Superflex PP full point PPR league, this trade grades out very well for this particular set of settings. Yeah. When you're looking at Nico Collins' price right now, his ADP overall on Keep Trade Cut is 40. So he's going early fourth round. 
compared to Jaden Reed, who's going all the way down at 79. So, you, you know, the seventh, eighth round pretty much. And I, I think with that price, um, on t- you're getting Stephon Diggs on top of Jaden Reed. That's something where I'm like, okay, I think it is definitely fair for both sides with Nico Collins' contract insulation. The the questions with Stephon Diggs long-term, is he going to be in Houston? Jaden Reed, we really like Jaden Reed, but what is his upside in that offense? We don't really know for sure. But, I mean, Reed is a guy that I think is we've consistently told you to target in our team blueprints over at flockfantasy.com slash domain. Hey, consistently yo. for almost every team that's like you know young future value building up needs wide receiver go get you know go down tier to Jaden Reed go target Jaden Reed if you're trying to get some wide receiver depth and, and, and value upside as well if you want one of those team blueprints and you want that customizable feedback you can go to flockfantasy.com slash domain use code domain to get 30% off any additional blueprint purchases that's the OG blueprint that's blueprint 2.0 that's a live team review on one of those blueprints that you purchase and you get a free original blueprint when you sign up for the annual mother flocker tier using code domain so you can get that first blueprint and then you can purchase however many blueprints you want to after that as well if you're already a code user on the site with a a different creator there with land or flock you can still buy blueprints from us anyone can buy a blueprint now if you just go to flockfantasy.com slash domain sign up for the mother flocker tier and you'll be able to get a team blueprint from us 12 team superflex half point ppr uh in half point tight end premium in a four point passing touchdown league and this matters because you're trading quarterbacks it's anthony richardson for evan ingram or sorry anthony richardson and evan ingram for caleb williams here this is easy it's it's ingram and ar for me i think in a four point passing touchdown league i mean i think caleb williams and anthony richardson are pretty much value equivalent and so you just take are. the one just, that you know you just take the one with more things on one side, right? right so right. Uh, I like this trade. I think I think that this is a good example of a little bit of a down tier. Let's talk about this one as well. This is technically a down tier. I don't know. Jalen Hurts in the 102 for Patrick Mahomes and Kenneth Walker. It's not really close, guys. Like, I mean, Hurts and Mahomes are barely separated in value right now in Dynasty. So because of that, like, you're, you're taking the 102, I mean, that's 40 that's, times over. Guys, that's Marvin Harrison Jr., yeah, let's go to the next one. Huh? <laughs> That's not even close. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey and Sam Laporta um, for Tyreek Hill and the 103. This is a 10-team Superflex PPR six-point passing touchdown. Um, so when you're looking at the 103 in a 10-team Superflex with the six-point passing touchdown, I think you would still expect, uh, I don't know if Caleb Williams is going to fall to you there since it is six-point passing. He might, though, in a 10-team because the demand for quarterback is a little bit and lower. At the 103? Yeah. Oh, he, he would be there. I'm, I'm considering the 103 as neighbors, probably. <sighs> because, because again, like we're... Worst-case scenario, it's neighbors, right? So plan for worst-case scenario. If you still haven't had your rookie draft yet, you're targeting that 103. Let's just say, right, for, for theoretical sake, let's say Tyreek Hill and let's say Malik neighbors for Christian McCaffrey and Sam Laporta in a 10-team super flex. I'm curious what you think of this one. I'm honestly taking the CMC side here. I, I I think that CMC and Tyreek Hill are pretty much equivalent uh, contending assets for the next three years. Yes. And so when I'm talking about Laporta versus the 103, he didn't specify if this was a tight end premium, but I'm going to assume that it is. Uh, if this is a tight end premium league, Sam Laporta is somebody that I'd be taking over the 103 in a 10-team Superflex league. Oh, it's so close, man. It's so it close. Really close. Because it's 10 teams, so then... Like, quarter, I'm almost end, inclined to... Tight ends also lose a little bit less value. I mean, I just want the proven guy. I mean, both of these... The, the, this, to it's me, looks close. like two contenders making a deal, and one of them's taking a shot on a rookie. If you're both contenders... Take just the take proven the, players. Take the proven players. That's, what, that's, my first, that's my first gut instinct, so I'll go with that as well. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the next trade here. Ah, uh, Hawkinson. I love me some deals with Hawkinson. TJ Hawkinson, Jonathan Taylor, and a 25 first for CMC, Dobbins, Mitchell, CMC. and Musgrave... No, so it's, it's no. I'm I'm I. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm taking the Hawkinson and JT side. It's just CMC, but it's like, just CMC essentially. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were saying you were taking the CMC side. No, I it's, I understand. It's, I would understand this in a higher upside league, but this is a 12 team non super flex full PPR. Um, no but, picks till 2027. No yeah. picks. The the you got to make this deal. 100. percent I mean, there's a chance that if all things go to heck for this contender that you made the deal with who acquired Christian McCaffrey, then you're getting a pretty high 25 pick. So just it, take the package here with, with the value upside. Uh, Devonta Smith, Drake London, the 109 for Jamar Chase. I mean, this is a pretty easy win, in my opinion, for the side that's getting the package. Drake London could be value equivalent to Jamar Chase alone next year. This is a start. It's a 1QB. Um, and it's also, he also said he's later traded the 109 for Nico Collins straight up. Uh, so it's essentially Nico, Drake London, Devonta Smith for Jamar Chase. To me, 
Guys, that's two wide receiver ones potentially, and a wide receiver two, maybe a wide receiver one and two wide receiver. I, I, it doesn't matter. Again, this is a pretty common recommendation that you're going to hear from us when we do blueprints for you guys. It's down tuned from Jamar Chase, not because we don't like Jamar Chase, but we just think there's some guys that are valued significantly below him that have just as much upside opportunity. And these are the types of deals that we're looking for. When we're saying down tier from Jamar Chase, this is what you can get. Don't say it doesn't happen. It absolutely does. You're seeing it right here. Like, this is exactly what you want to look for. Uh, in a 12-team, one QB, no tight end premium. Full P, full point PPR. Javon Baker in a 25 first or Trey Benson? The, the first. I, I feel like I feel like anytime you can get a random first for 25, or a random first for Trey Benson, you take it. Javon Baker's just nice yes. on the cake, right? Yes. It's a perfect example of Devers fanning off of a rookie that's particularly risky because he was going like, you know, really second in 12-team Super Bowl drafts. And, and like, we like Trey Benson. Like him like, a lot. I, I think he's... I like first more. Yeah. Especially in next year's class, like if you put Trey Benson in the 2025 class at the running probably back, position, get a better running back. He's probably the fifth guy off the board. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, next trade. Uh, this is going to be uh, James Conner, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Zay Flowers in the 25 second for Lamar Jackson, Jamison w- or Javante Williams, Khalil Shakir, and Jamison Williams. Both Jay Williams. So, so both Jay Williams. I'm really gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I'm going to throw out Javante, Jamo, and Cleo Shakir and just Doesn't talk matter. about Lamar Jackson here for Amon Ross St. Brown and Zay Flowers. That's what the meat of the deal is. That and is really the So meat it's of the a deal. 10 team. Now, in a Superflex League, and in a 10 team Superflex League, you do want the rushing upside quarterbacks. So, so, I kind of, so the, the decreased demand kind of cancels out because he is a rushing QB. Right. So exactly, the value is exactly. about the same. So it's about the same. Um, <sighs> no Titan premium. This one's tough, matter. man. No, it doesn't. I don't know about this one, man. Give me, I mean, it, I guess it depends on who your other quarterback is. In a 10-team upside, Zay Flowers has some upside questions as much as we like him. Give me Lamar. I think I'm going to take Lamar there as well. Yeah. Um, again, if you, have, if you have Anthony Richardson as your quarterback, then yeah, I'd make this trade. But yes. it just depends. Uh, this is a 12-team super flex PPR, no tight end premium. We trade a Ty J Spears uh, for a 27 first and a 26 third. First of all, pause. Why are we trading 2027 20, picks right now? Well... I mean, please do not. Don't do that. But if you can get if somebody's twenty seven first, take it. just take it. Yeah, this is a this is a take your medicine yeah. deal, right? I, I mean, on the Ty J Spears. No, I literally just traded Ty J Spears today for a twenty five second and Malachi Corley. So I mean, if I had the opportunity of getting a first down the line, like even further down the road, I probably would have taken it. Like it just. Yeah. It's first. So probably. yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Godwin and Marshawn Lloyd for Tony Pollard and Roman Wilson. I'm good with the Godwin side here. To me, this is Godwin for Pollard. Um, it just depends on kind of what your need is. I like Marshawn Lloyd as much as I like Wilson. I think this is almost a fair value trade, if I'll anything. Th- yeah, I'll take Godwin and Lloyd. I'm usually yeah, a Pollard guy, but I'll, I'll go with the receiver I'm more guy. confident in and the guy that I think has really good receiving upside in Marshawn Lloyd. 14 team, uh, PPR one could be in that one, by yeah. the way, so it doesn't make a huge difference. But yeah. Nico, Bryce Young, in a second for Bonix and Neighbors. This is a 10 team PPR super flex, um, three wide receiver start 10. So, Bo Nix, less significant here, but just as less significant. Bryce Young, that's a lateral move. Is Bryce and Bo Nix? I think you got. I think opinion. I think you take. I think you take Malik Neighbors. I think you go Neighbors as in well in a three wide receiver. Yeah, uh, start ten for a ten team PPR yep. super flexibly. I think take you just. I think you there. take the upside with Malik Neighbors there. Uh, and then last one here: Jalen Waddle, James Cook in the one twelve. Um, so, and then you're trading away a 25 first, the 106, and then two thirds. So essentially, the 106. Two first. So essentially, what you did, you moved down. Six spots, uh, and then you got James Cook on top of that, and you got Jalen Waddle for a random first. Twelve team super flex tight end premium start ten. Yeah, Waddle side wins with that extra first. Yeah, I I definitely because a random so. twenty five first for James Cook is pretty close. I prefer the first. Yeah, Waddle versus the one hundred six again pretty close. You prefer Waddle, and you get the and then you just throw the one twelve on top. So, so that's one. yeah, and again these are all you know some of these are rookie picks, and we're not making trades with rookie picks anymore. But a lot of these are going to be like some lateral moves that positionally where you see uh, there there are some advantages to taking some of these deals. So we had yeah. we did this video by popular request. So if you like this kind of video, make sure you drop a like on this video and also like Nathan said flockfantasy.com slash domain use code domain choose mother flocker tier you get all the tools trade calculator dynasty rankings dynasty adp database everything that we use on a daily basis plus you get a free team blueprint 1.0 you also get a 30 percent discount on any other team blueprints including team blueprint 2.0 which looks really really sick and so we'd be thrilled to have you over there for this dynasty season but we appreciate you guys watching thanks for joining us we'll see you later mm-hmm.